Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. The New Orleans Saints look like the favorites they are to win the NFC South. Also, the injury to Nick Chubb shrouded a competitive and crucial battle the Browns and the Steelers put together on Monday night. And the Rams are making an interesting decision on Cam Akers. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on or enter promo code locked on for a free water bottle with any purchase. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off. We promise you. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. If three's a crowd, then the NFC South is pretty crowded. Three teams now 2-0 and at the top of the division after the New Orleans Saints held off the Carolina Panthers 20-7 to at Bank of America Stadium. Speaking of Bank of America Stadium, Ross Jackson from Locked On Saints at Bank of America Stadium joins me now. And Ross, this is a Saints team that has now won a pair of close games to get to that 2-0 and with Derek Carr under center this one they really had to ham and egg put together Taysom Hill trying to sticky tape and and glue together (laughs) an offense here Uh, how are how are they how are they doing this yeah, um, in, in in what might be at the moment the most unsustainable way on offense possible. Um, you know, <laughs> the, the, the key the key to the New Orleans State's offense right now seems to be lull the opposing team to sleep during the first half, hit a deep shot to Rashid Shahid and or Chris Olave, and then score one, maybe two touchdowns, and then see if that ends up putting you out over the top. But honestly, it, it really does come down to, for, for this team, the, the sustainable part of what it is that they can do is that they can win with defense. This is a team yeah. right now that hasn't allowed Uh, 20 or more points in the last 10 games and uh, that is a franchise record for this team and that puts them in position to win games for now it it it, you could nitpick the last two right but 10 games that Mm -hmm. is a different kind of sample size like sure okay week one Ryan Tannehill plays terrible then you get the rookie Bryce Young but still now we're talking about half a season here what about this offensive experiment though ross because if this team wants to be a playoff team wants to be someone that is a factor in the nfc they're gonna have to get this offense figured out what do they need to do better to get there yeah i think it all starts up front it's got to be protection first be able to buy Derek carr a little bit more time to be able to take advantage of some of those weapons that are out there we saw today or or, or this evening rather uh, you know a, a rushing attack of over 130 yards which is vastly improved from what they did last week against the tennessee titans two times that and these are both you know challenging fronts in terms of the titans defense and the carolina panthers defense but there are going to be tougher challenges out there and if new orleans wants to be able to f- put together a recipe on offense not to use a, a, a food pun on a new orleans team here but But if they want to put together the recipe for the right gumbo, I guess you can say the run game has to be a part of it. Protection up front has to be a part of it. The Saints have some really good weapons on offense, but they need the time to be able to or they need to buy Derek Carr the time to be able to take advantage of it. Yeah, a little little protection, a little time. Now you got a stew going and you're in really good shape. There you go. The the problem we call it it gumbo down south, though. We don't do stew. We don't do stew. (laughs) (laughs) Running backs for the Saints, though, 21 carries. 65 yards it was Taysom Hill it was all Taysom Hill Mm -hmm. in this running game nine for 75 in this one how sustainable is the Taysom Hill of it all I think one of the reasons that the Saints struggled last year was because they didn't use Taysom Hill enough and so if anything this was a good diagnosis are you feeling okay Saints yeah, yeah, I know. Isn't that insane? Isn't that wild? But really, I mean, you think about like what it is that worked and didn't work last year. A lot of times in the red zone on down on short yarded situations, they didn't turn to Taysom Hill. And so being able to see them do that a little bit more here. And hey, look, a couple of touchdowns from undrafted free agent Tony Jones Jr., who's been on three teams in the last 12 months and loved getting a <laughs> phone call to return here to New Orleans, I guess didn't hurt either. But I think y- you look at that. But then you also have to consider that after their game against Green Bay, they get Alvin Kamara back as well. That should provide them a little bit of boost to their run game and they have a rookie and TC, former TCU running back Kendra Miller that they haven't even gotten the chance to see yet so uh, yeah it's been a lot of uh, a lot of Taysom Hill in this game it's probably going to be a lot of Taysom Hill uh, in Green Bay next week but eventually they're going to have to move off of that and get some of these other running backs and uh, you know producing in their run game yeah former Green Bay Packer Taysom Hill that's right uh, that's right no, no one in Green Bay forgets that by the way uh, now that we're hungry <laughs> uh, let's finish up here quickly with Derek Carr uh, yeah. evaluate him for me for through two weeks here with the saints 
Uh, I think the word I would use for him is, is persistent. Maybe I would go as so far as to say resilient. Um, I, I, but I think the biggest thing with him is that he's somebody that has a short enough memory and is a good enough leader that when they struggle through these first halves, I mean, uh, through these first halves, these first two games, that he can bring this team back. And they rally around him. They believe in him and he believes in them. And that's enough for them to be able to put things together and get things fixed in the second half. You just want to see them get started there. So for all the slow starts or, or for all the resiliency and all that, the slow start is the thing that's going to get in their way he's got to get that fixed as well as this new orleans saints offense if they want to win more games stay up to date all year on the new orleans saints by subscribing to locked on sports today and locked on saints on your favorite podcast app and on youtube thanks for making locked on sports today your first listen coming up nick chubb's injury overshadowed anything else on the field for brown Steelers. before we get to why mahomes got the bag again I've never had a pair of shorts that made me look good while also being really, really comfortable until I got a pair of bird dogs. Bird dogs make you look good. They're stretch khaki shorts designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. They fit like a dream, I'm telling you. Bird Dogs invented cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. I I want them to come out with 16 more colors. The only problem I have with them is I need more of them. I need more, 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 more. I want all my shorts to be bird dogs. You can seriously go from the couch to the golf course to night out all in the same pair of bird dogs. I should know. I've done it. I've been doing it all summer. These are the most comfortable pair of shorts I've ever owned. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on or enter promo code locked on for a free water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on or promo code locked on for that free water bottle. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise. Justin Herbert got paid. Lamar Jackson got paid. Jalen Hurts got paid. Joe Burrow got paid. So it's only right that Patrick Mahomes fell down the list of the highest paid players. Kansas City decided to fix that. The Chiefs and Mahomes restructured his agreement, giving him $210.6 million between 2023 and 2026, the most money in NFL history over a four-season span. His compensation for those years is now fully guaranteed, according to the reporting, and the Chiefs and Mahomes plan to revisit the agreement again after the 2026 season. When asked how the Chiefs went about determining Mahomes' worth, Chiefs Chairman Clark Hunt said, I don't know that there's really a way to quantify it financially, and no matter what he makes over his career, one way or another, he'll be underpaid. And speaking of getting paid, running backs aren't, and it's getting contentious, even more contentious than it already has been. The NFL has filed agreements against the NFL Players Association alleging that the union leaders, including President J.C. Treader, have advised running backs to consider feigning or exaggerating injuries to help increase their leverage in contract negotiations. In a memo sent to the League's Management Council Executive Committee, the NFL said the union made the suggestion to running backs during a Zoom meeting before the season, any player who took the union's advice and faked an injury would be violating the collective bargaining agreement, the league argued. The thing that I don't quite get about this is Part of the reason running backs don't get a lot of money is because they get hurt a lot. So why would you want to say I'm hurt when I'm not hurt if you being hurt is part of the reason you're not getting the money? This is, yeah, I can't follow the logic on the NFL a lot. Michigan State University informed head coach Mel Tucker of the school's intent to terminate his contract for cause, citing a body of undisputed evidence of misconduct that warrants termination. Michigan State delivered the notice in a five-page letter from Athletic Director Alan Haller, which details what the university sees as unprofessional and unethical behavior. Tucker has been suspended without pay after sexual harassment allegations emerged in media reports last weekend. An independent investigator hired by the school has been examining the allegations since January, and Tucker's suspension came after the specific allegations arose in media reports. We need an investigation now into why this took so long and why only now after the reporting comes out, why only now after it was made public, did Michigan State decide to act? We know the answer, but we need to know what happened and what they knew when. Free agent swingman Kelly Oubre is expected to sign a one-year deal with the Philadelphia 76ers, according to Adrian Wojnarowski. Oubre could get significant opportunity on the wing with the uncertainty around James Harden, who, you may recall, has requested a trade out of Philly. 
Oubre could play off the bench. Even if Harden isn't traded with all the turnover Philly has seen, Oubre will be entering his ninth season in the league and has developed into a solid scorer, averaging 20 points in 48 games for the Charlotte Hornets last season. He's also a career 43.4 shooter from the field and averaged 32 and a half minutes per game last season in Charlotte. And in NL wildcard news, the Cincinnati Reds re-entered the chat after a big performance from a rookie. Pretty much a sentence we've been saying all year about the Reds. Connor Phillips delivers what might be the most important pitching performance of the season. What's up? This is Jeff Carr from the Lockdown Reds podcast and the rookie who up until this point had looked like a rookie absolutely delivered a beautiful game. Seven innings, two runs allowed, both of them solo home runs, seven strikeouts, tons of swing and misses and all the confidence on the mound in the world. Connor Phillips looked every bit the part of Nick Kroll's favorite player from the Eugenio Suarez and Jesse Winker trade. Absolutely love to see the performance that he gave. Great night from the line. Lineup as well. Noel V. Marte, Will Benson, Joey Votto, everybody getting in on the action. And, and then the Reds made a ton of roster moves. Lots to talk about on the next Lockdown Reds podcast. Make sure you join us. After getting their doors blown off in week one, the Pittsburgh Steelers needed to get right. How about a rivalry game in primetime Monday night football? That's what they got. And what else did they get? A dub. 26 to 22. They get the win over the Cleveland Browns in what was for a lot of the game an ugly back and forth affair. Chris Carter joins me from the stadium in Pittsburgh. And and Chris, I, I would say what went better for the Steelers in this game compared to week one, but the answer is everything. So... Uh, what was most improved that made the difference in this game against a Cleveland Browns defense that so far looks like a really good group? I mean, that's the thing. Kenny Pickett throwing that 71-yard touchdown pass to George Pickens in a week where they're missing Deontay Johnson. They lost Gunnar Olszewski early in the game. They were really down to about three wideouts who they practice with normally in the offense. And the fact that they got a touchdown out of that was very impressive. George Pickens showing he can be the guy when he's called upon. But th- there's no doubt, Peter, the game changer of this game was T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith. Mm-hmm. Both get a sack. Both both make big plays and both have touchdowns in this game. Alex Highsmith getting a pick six, also forcing a fumble that T.J. Watt would recover and score a touchdown. The two of them get 14 points in this game. Meanwhile, on the other side, T.J. TJ Watt getting getting his job. Miles Garrett only one tackle in the in the game. There's a lot of talk about how production and there's the, all pressures is more important than production. I don't know what what a better game to highlight how much of a game wrecker T.J. Watt is and how Alex Highsmith also is being slept on for how much he can impact games. Yeah, T.J. Watt becomes the Pittsburgh Steelers all-time leading sack leader, which seems crazy considering he's not even 30 years old. Right. Uh, that said, this defense, Chris has been the calling card for the Steelers team uh, basically from time immemorial. Uh, And yet 198 yards on 35 carries against them on Monday night. And that's in a game where Nick Chubb goes down with a scary, scary uh, leg injury. Obviously our thoughts go out to him. That was was one of the, one of the more brutal injuries you are ever going to see on a football field. Uh, what, what can they do to get this run defense back to where we would expect it from a Mike Tomlin Pittsburgh Steelers defense? It's, it's what adjustment I've been calling for personally. Montrevious Adams, a former Packer, uh, uh, was, was on the field. He's been there, started at the nose, and he was just getting whooped. In the second half, they put in Keanu Benton, the rookie they drafted out of Wisconsin, and he looked much better. And that helped them stuff the run a lot better in the second half. But also some sloppiness on their parts. Levi Wallace having an all-time terrible game. He was the guy that gave up the edge on that 70-yard run. He gave up the edge on the on, on the on the McCaffrey 65-yard touchdown last week. And he was getting picked on in this game by Deshaun Watson in the times they were able to find success. He was a big problem there. Also, you can see the impact of not having Cam Hayward. And you and honestly, the Steelers defense deserves credit because they lost Minka Fitzpatrick early in the third quarter in this game. Yep. And I thought that was going to be it for, the, for this defense. But still, they find a way to win with their other stars in the field despite missing two of their best players on the team and arguably two of the best players in the position in the NFL. Still, uh, they have a lot to work on. They talked about needing to clean up. But like I said, going into this game, the key was going to be, could their edge rushers make more plays than Cleveland's edge rushers? And they absolutely did. So where does this team stand now after two weeks? They get this critical win against the Browns team that is loaded with talent, albeit amid a ton of injuries, Pittsburgh dealing with injuries of their own. But we saw in week one, a a game they'd like to forget. So... How do we how do we balance that right now with this Pittsburgh team? 
I think this is still a team that has a lot to clean up right now. They're sloppy on a, on a lot of things, and they even admitted that as much after the game. Kenny Pickett saying, hey, we executed some things, but we got a lot to clean up. Uh, you know, the defense also acknowledging, yes, they made a lot of plays, but they want to be more stout against the run. Granted, they probably just faced two of the better rushing threats in the NFL, in the Niners and the Browns. Next up, they got the Raiders and the Texans. They can't afford to go to sleep on these guys. They've got to be able to clean some things up on offense, be more consistent, convert more on third down. They were not happy with their third down production today, but – I do think that they're seeing improvement. Now they just got to take, keep taking those steps forward, and they'll be a better team. I don't think the Steelers are a, a really good team right now. I think they're a pretty average team, but they have the talent to be better, especially with the youth on their roster. That's going to be the key. Can the roster, can, can the young guys like Kenny Pickett, Najee Harris, Pat Fryermuth, and Joy Porter Jr., who had great coverage on that fourth down pass at the end of the game, the rookie coming in big, can guys like that step up and keep making this roster better? That could be the story of the 2023 Steelers. Stay up to date on the Pittsburgh Steelers by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Steelers on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Coming up, the Rams are moving on from Cam Akers already. Cam Akers has dealt with injury after injury to begin his career. The Los Angeles Rams have had enough. Locked On host Travis Rogers and Doug McCain have more. He was a late scratch. He was a surprise inactive on Sunday against the 49ers, getting scratched despite being healthy for week two. Per Jay Glazer, the Cam Akers was deactivated due to a coach's decision, and other teams have heard he's on the trade block. Now in week one, Akers ended up scoring that touchdown. He did finish with just 29 yards rushing on 22 attempts. Kyron Williams is clearly the better back. I thought that he's been one of the big bright spots for this Rams offense early on, but to me, it just feels like you got to cut bait at this point it's done well i, I want to read a tweet from jordan Rodriguez, who covers the team from the athletic and this is what she got out of sean mcveigh towards the end of the uh the game or after the game last night it says sean mcveigh calls making acres inactive a coach's decision says it's quote different than what happened last year and the team's evaluating options over the next couple of days but it quote quote go back and forth right they're done you know, this, this is kind of one of these things that, you know, I had a, 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 a moment with an ex and it just, you know, we decided to, she was going to move out. And then, you know, it kind of, we decided to try one more. It was okay for a while. And then it happened again. You're like, you know what? I was right the first time. This is just not going to work out. This, by the way, is why running backs don't get paid. It was really just one injury, the Achilles injury that turned Cam Akers from one of the most exciting young running backs in the league, someone who looked like he had the potential to become a true difference maker and star. One injury that he rushed back from and was just never the same. Once you lose that explosiveness as a running back, it's just over. You can't get into the gaps that you used to be able to get into. You can't hit the creases you used to be able to get into. And when your legs aren't as fresh, when you don't have the same juice and explosiveness, the game moves too fast in the NFL. It is a young man's game. And even though Cam Akers is a young man, his legs are not young after all the wear and tear and the injuries that have accrued. It's the brutal reality. It is a painful reality. And it is sad to see Cam Akers was once such a promising player and his career could truly be over because it doesn't seem like there is a ton of interest around the NFL in acquiring Cam Akers services because we can all see what the Rams see. The juice is gone. And once, once a running back loses that. And finally, Colorado State defensive back Henry Blackburn delivered a late hit to Colorado wide receiver Travis Hunter that ended Hunter's night. Since that game, Blackburn and his family have received death threats. How is that possible, you ask? Someone posted Blackburn and his family's cell phone numbers on the internet. I, I don't understand this. Stop doing this. Don't do this. Don't be like this. Be better than this. It was a dirty hit. It was a bad play. Don't do this. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Now go find your favorite team's Locked On podcast and make them your second listen. Coming up on the next Locked On Sports today, three teams in the NFC South are now undefeated. This division was supposed to be bad. 
What's going on? So at least until tomorrow, stay locked on sports today. Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. For more episodes of Locked On Sports Today, go to our video on demand. Click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of Locked On Sports Today, plus other Locked On shows on demand.